Welcome to Growing Hope with Katherine Lang, coming to you from the rolling hills of Big Spring Valley in beautiful Alabama. Katherine Lang offers words of encouragement and hope to help grow up lives boldly pursuing peace and joy. Katherine seeks out the rainbows of life while sharing her lollipops of encouragement along her journey. Here on Growing Hope, she features words to help hope and grow courage, all while challenging herself and listeners to radical choices and bold purpose. This is Growing Hope with Katherine Lang, where we are growing hearts open to pursue the extraordinary. And now, here's your host, Katherine Lang. Hello there and welcome to today's episode of Growing Hope where we are investing just a few minutes to grow up hearts open to pursue the extraordinary. I am Katherine Lang and I am now and will always be your faithful and faith-filled rainbows and lollipops host because I know there is a silver lining and I believe there is a possibility and I have learned that where there is hope, there exists a foundation of strength. And that hope can always be found at any time and in any, in any situation if I'm willing to invest in finding it. Now, the last few times we've been together, we've been talking about finding accountability for this journey from within and from without because accountability will get us there. Now, it is also one of my all-time favorite subjects. So, I have been investing into me and into my journey because I have to keep this real. I have to keep this focused. I need this. I need accountability even more if I want to launch to the next level of this journey. So, we're tackling the five steps that have helped me or are or are helping me build up accountability. And I'm sharing these steps and also breaking each step down so that you can see what works for me and create your own path to accountability because we're all unique and we have to find our own way. We want to find accountability, but we also want to be without the tripping into despair and guilt. So step one is to release the situation. Step two is to think happy thoughts. Step three is to recognize the difference between accountability and guilt. Step four is to maintain three points of contact. And step five is to take a time out. I broke down the first step to the five questions I ask myself to help me determine if the situation is one I need to deal with or if it's one I need to walk away from. And I found that when I do take a moment to think it over, then more often than not, it's not my issue to fix and it's not my problem to manage. I can just let it go. (laughs) The second step, I broke down into five, five simple tips about getting happy thoughts and keeping those thoughts. It requires guarding the mind and protecting the ears and watching the mouth because words have power and those that manage to get planted into my mind become the words that I speak and that I live. The third step led to more questions I have to ask to help me judge the value of the guidance I'm being offered by other people. I want to live out an accountable life, but I don't want to get dragged down by guilt. There is a difference in how people approach me, and there is also a huge difference in how I choose to receive their words and respond to the challenge they present. Now, today I'm moving on to the three points of contact. All this began with my love of caving and climbing or spelunking. I learned early on to maintain three points of contact to keep from falling. Uh, Now, I might slip. I might even have a misstep. But if I maintain my three points of contact, then I knew I could hang on and I could go higher and further than I ever imagined possible. I taught my children the three points of contact from an early age because we did a lot of hiking and I never worried about them climbing trees or other objects or going on adventures because I knew that they would maintain their three points of contact. It was only during a back porch chat with my dad that I recognized he had been teaching me the same thing for most of my life, only he was teaching me how to maintain three points of contact for life. He always told me to look at scripture, tradition, and reason when I was struggling for the next step. 
I took his teaching and my teaching for my children, the three points of contact, and I came up with three points of contact for life that will keep me from falling or stumbling into the pit of despair. That is the word, prayer, and wise counsel. Just like when I was caving and climbing, the three points of contact can keep me from falling or they can be the key to helping me go higher and further than I ever imagined possible. These three points of contact will keep me focused on the path that God has for my life. And when I'm pursuing that focus, the one uniquely and specifically designed for me, then I will have all that I imagined possible and so much more. But how do I gain these three points of contact? Well, first, I keep a record of the affirmations I receive. Second, I develop a reservoir of support and encouragement. Third, I create a tunnel vision for my purpose and towards my purpose. Fourth, I work to keep the momentum going because once you get going, it's, it's easier to keep going. It's the getting going that can be the challenge. So it's better to keep going so you don't have to keep getting going, if that makes sense. And it does in my head, so come live with me sometime. <laughs> And fifth, I, I grow up advanced giving habits. Someone will try to pull the rug out from under me. Always, someone will try to pull out the rug from under my feet. Sometimes the ground will shift when I step. Things will fall out of nowhere and try to knock me off balance. But having three points of contact will allow me to maybe slip, maybe slide, but not fall because I can hold on to what I need to hold on to. Look, things are never going to be perfect. But with these three points of contact, I can be perfected in my pursuit of this journey. I can have stability as I go. I can have the strength to move on even when... Things are not the way that I expected or or that I wanted. It is not easy to stay on track in a world determined to distract me. The not, no, they demand my attention. The right support will make the difference when it comes to making good and better choices for, for each moment of my day. Now, Growing Hope needs to take a quick break, but when we return, I'm going to begin to break down these three points of contact so that we can start creating our own path to stand strong in this world. This is the Growing Hope Review. Each week, I will share with you one of my favorite Bible studies, books, or movies, and I will tell you why I was moved to share. Although I know that we each get something different out of the things we encounter, I also know that when we are moved by words, then others are likely to be moved as well. This week's review is for The Little Prince, one of my all-time favorite books. Now, I was going to tell you the name of the author, but he's French, and I don't speak French. And even when I went to the internet to figure out how to pronounce his name, I knew I didn't stand a chance. The good news is that The Little Prince, although originally written in French, has been translated to English. I first met The Little Prince when I was in high school. The wisdom from the book provided me with the comfort I needed when I was grieving over a lost friend. I carried that copy with me to college, where the soft voice of The Little Prince reminded me that I was responsible for the people that I loved. I still have the hard copy of that book. But I've also added to my collection the Kindle version. Now I have the words of the Little Prince with me wherever I go. Although the truth is, I've read the book so many times that his words really are always with me. I've read the book to my kids. I've written articles about the book. I've even quoted the book so many times that his words feel like my own. The Little Prince is a short book, around 96 pages. But each time I've read through the book, I've learned something new about my journey through the journey of The Little Prince. If you've never read The Little Prince, now is the time. It's being adapted to an animated movie coming out this holiday season, and I've seen the trailer. It made me cry. But before you see the movie, you need to meet The Little Prince for yourself. This was the Growing Hope Review.
The music for this production was created by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by attribution. The sound of the door unlocking made her heart speed up. Her reasonable mind told her there was nothing on the other side, but reason had lost its argument long ago. It was time to face the past, no matter how much she wanted to run. Run, the pulse-quickening first novel in the Big Spring series from Catherine C. Lang. Don't look back. Get it today in paperback or ebook at Amazon.com or CatherineLang.com. Run. R&D Computer Solutions, serving all your computer needs. We provide low-cost hosting options, complete website development, and online troubleshooting service. No matter what your needs, the staff at R&D Computer Solutions will be there to help you find the answer. Visit www.rdcss.com to learn more about R&D Computer Services, a family-owned and Christian-run quality computer business. The music for this production was created by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution. Welcome back to Growing Hope Radio. I am still Catherine Lang, your faithful and faith-filled rainbows and lollipops host. And I am developing the skills that will provide me with the three points of contact for my journey. Three points that will keep me stable even if the world tries to shift the ground out from under me. I used to spend a lot of time climbing and caving and spelunking and how I learned that's how I learned that maintaining three points of contact not only keep me from falling, but help me to do more and get further than I ever imagined. I also learned that I had passed the three points of contact on to my children. But it was only recently that I realized the value of taking that climbing lesson and applying it to life. I can build up three points of contact for my life, the word, prayer, and wise counsel when I follow some simple tips. First, I need to keep a record of all the words of affirmation that I receive. I write down the comments that people make about my achievements, great and small. The comments they make about my gifts and talents and even the achievements that they notice in my life. I date the comments and where it happens so that I can remember the moment and the feeling in that moment and not just the words. I keep this list of thoughts in my leather notebook that contains my Bible study, my Sunday school lessons, my sermon notes, and my Bible study notes. This keeps all of my focus materials together, but it is important that you find something that works for you. Once I have a way to keep a record of the affirmations, the second thing I do is build a reservoir of support for my journey. Anywhere I can find like-minded people. That would be positive focused people is a good place to make this happen. It is best if I find others that at least understand or support the the particular journey that I'm on. But as long as they support me taking the steps that is good, that is good for me, that's a good thing. I'm looking for people that will believe in me and support me because these are the people that I will turn to when I need that hand up. To, uh, for encouragement. These these are the kind of people you need to be looking for so that you have this reservoir of support and encouragement in your life. So first, I'm keeping a record of affirmation. And second, I'm developing a reservoir of encouragement. The third thing I'm going to do is keep a focus center that reminds me of where I want this journey to take me. Now, I wrote out what I wanted for my journey And I printed it out, um, I I painted a word image of me, where I wanted to be, what I saw me doing. I thought about what it would be like for me to get to that image, what it would take, what sacrifices would need to be made, what actions I would need to do. This is my focus center. It keeps me aimed in the right direction. When I was first starting to drive, my dad taught me that when something comes at you, like when a bird flies at the window or something rolls across the road in front of you, you are going to react, always. The key is to train your reactions to keep you safe. So I started ducking just a little, you know, just that little flinch. It's just enough to give me a place to send my reactions. For me, creating a focus, that tunnel vision makes it possible for me to react to everything that comes my way. The squirrels, the requests, the opportunities. 
but to react in a way that is beneficial to continuing on my journey instead of driving me off into a ditch. I know I'm going to react. I know I'm going to get excited and enthusiastic about things, especially if others are excited and enthusiastic. That's just my personality. If I don't have my focus honed and bold and right where I can get my hands on it, then I'll be off down the rabbit hole with Alice. Now, finally, I have to keep reminding myself that it is not all about me. As a matter of fact, there is very little of it that is about me, except for the things that are about me. But that's another story for another day. I remember that it's not all about me by building a habit of being relentlessly helpful. By developing a tilt towards advanced giving. It can be easy to fall into a pattern of what's in it for me? What am I going to get out of this? I've been bombarded with reminders of late that I have to see beyond what I will get and instead be determined to give to others. I changed how I had my ebooks listed and I posted them on my website as free downloads. You can find them over at www.katherinelang.com forward slash ebooks. I do um, develop multiple ebooks into print books, and I plan to develop my ebooks into courses and seminars so that I can monetize the information. But I'm also looking to help you, and I'm looking to be helpful with a relentless focus. Everything in life, from family to church to marketing to business, is about first being. Uh, creating those connections and growing that grow up into relationships and second being focused on helping others without expectation of return if i carry these principles over into my life journey then they will help me maintain my balance they lead me into my three points of contact that will hold me up they will keep me from falling they will keep me focused on the right direction it's just three points of contact The word, prayer, wise counsel, they will keep me well grounded. And even if I do slip a little or I do stumble a little, it's these three points of contact that keep me from falling. I need the balance. There's so much noise and so much chaos and so much activity just in my house alone, <laughs> you know, even even without looking out to the world, there's so much going on that it's easy to lose the focus of what it is I'm supposed to be doing, what I have been designed to do, what I'm being pointed towards. I begin to go here and there and everywhere else, and sometimes it doesn't even relate to what it is I know I'm supposed to be doing. I have to be to maintain these three points of contact So I can get to that place that I know I'm supposed to be going. The three points of contact are just one more element of accountability that will hold me firm. If I miss out on any one point of contact, then I will struggle to hold on. It takes the three points of contact to keep give me that strong foundation I need so that I can face and the world and do what it is that I'm designed to do. Now, Growing Hope needs to take one more break, but when we come back, I'm going to share some scriptural foundations that add to and confirm these three points of contact. Growing Hope will be right back. Now it's time for the Growing Hope Weekly Scripture Focus. Each week, I will be sharing a favorite Bible verse that has jumped out at me or that has been on my mind. I will challenge you to memorize the verse and to watch how God is working that verse in your life. By putting the Word of God in our hearts and in our minds with consistency, those words will grow fruit and then bloom out through the things we speak and the actions we take. This week's verse comes from Ecclesiastes 4, 9, and 10. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falls, for he has not another to help him up. We need each other because we are stronger together. 
That's why it's so important to make time for relationships. When I have a foundation of relationships holding me up, I have people around me that will lift me up, grow me up, and sometimes just pick me up and carry me. We are designed for relationships, so we naturally desire relationships, but we still have to make them a priority if we're going to see those foundational relationships grow up in our lives and for our lives. Put the words from Ecclesiastes 4, 9, and 10 to work in your life. This has been your weekly scripture focus from Growing Hope. The music for this production was created by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution. There will always be an excuse. There will always be a reason not to keep going. There will always be something that tries to hinder my journey. In truth, the only thing that gets in the way of the journey looks back at me from the mirror every day. I am the only person, the only thing, that can hinder my success. Place and Purpose is a book that offers my own experiences with discovering that unique path and uncovering the truth that they don't hold the answers to my journey. I break it down to four simple questions. Why, what, how, and when. When you answer these questions for yourself, then you will be closer to that unique place designed just for you. Here are some of the things that are being shared about place and purpose. Catherine shares many ways that you can get closer to God and begin to identify that missing part of your life. Place and Purpose offers practical tips for digging into a personal relationship with God so that I can recognize His purpose for my life. Catherine Lang has filled this book with wonderful advice for beginners, but also practical advice for the seasoned believer. Get your copy of Place and Purpose by visiting www.catherinelang.com slash books and begin to answer the why, what, how, and when of your journey. The music for this production was created by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution. Welcome back to the final segment for today's Growing Hope. We are developing three points of contact that will help us stand on a foundation of accountability and not fall into a pit of guilt. I am still Catherine Lang and I am still your Rainbows and Lollipops host because no matter what, I will find hope. Things happen and it can be tough to hang on. Even good days offer slippery slopes of distraction and ditches. Accountability can keep me in the right place, can give me the right focus. And building three points of contact allow me to create a foundation of accountability. And this is vital to maintaining the focus I need. But how do I gain these three points of contact? Well, first, I keep a record of affirmation. Second, I develop a reservoir of support and encouragement. Third, I create tunnel vision that keeps me focused on my purpose. Fourth, I work to keep the momentum going because it's easier to keep going than to get going. And fifth, I grow up advanced giving habits. But once I begin building that foundation, those three points of contact, I make the foundation stronger by utilizing the best foundational tool ever, the Word of God. And the Word has a lot to say about building support and keeping focused on the better things. God made the process simple. He wrote down what I need so that I can learn it, so that I can meditate on it, so that I can regularly feed on it. 2 Timothy 3 puts it like this. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's God-breathed and God-directed. And it's designed to be used for teaching me for rebuking me, for correcting me, for training me up in righteousness. It is designed to help me become what I'm supposed to become. If I want to get all that designed benefits from the Word, then I have to invest in the Word. I have to make time every single day, preferably several times a day, to read the Word and study the Word. We were sharing in class the other day about the knowledge of a teacher on a video, and it dawned on me that the reason he was knowledgeable and the reason it seemed so simple to him 
was because he regularly invested in the Word. He made the Word a priority in his life. Try explaining football to someone who's never seen a game. Those that are invested in the game understand it. Those that are invested in the Word understand it better than those that are not. When I do, when I invest in the Word, when I make the Word a priority, then the Word will become what God designed it to be for my life. It will become that guiding, pivotal point for me. The world wants me to think its way. The world wants me to think God, uh, the world's way. And the world's way is never God's way. I have to be invested in the Word of God if I want the Word of God to be the direction that I take. In Romans 12, Paul reminds me the importance of redirecting my mind. He says in Romans 12 too, according to the NIV translation, Do not conform to the pattern of the world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what's, what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. In other words, when I invest in God, I understand what it is God wants me to do. And part of that will is that I'm not supposed to be doing it alone. From the beginning, God wanted us to be working together and walking through this together. Ecclesiastes 4, 9, and 10 puts it this way. Two are better than one, because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. The wisdom of Solomon, as shared in Proverbs, goes over and over the idea of wise counsel and the value of wise counsel. In 12.15, a wise man is the he who listens to counsel. 13.10, wisdom is with those who receive counsel. 24.6, in abundance of counselors, there is victory. 15.32, he who heeds correction gains understanding. I stay on the path that I'm supposed to be on by implementing actions and attitudes that keep me from slipping down the slope or falling in, falling in the ditch. I grow up a life that holds me accountable to this journey when I invest in the better and not the best. And it all begins in that word. That word is foundational and fundamental to becoming what I am supposed to be. Thank you so much for joining me today on this journey to accountability. Please let me know if I can do anything to help you out in your journey. You can email me at radio at katherinelang.com. That's R-A-D-I-O at K-A-T-H-R-Y-N-L-A-N-G dot C-O-M. You can have questions, thoughts, even just tell me your struggles or successes. I would also love to connect with you on social media. You can find me around the internet by searching for Katherine Lang. On Facebook, I'm the Katherine C. Lang. On Twitter, it's Catherine C. Lang. On Facebook, I'm the Catherine C. Lang. You can also listen to this syndicated broadcast of Growing Hope by visiting CatherineLang.com forward slash on dash air. I am Catherine Lang, your rainbows and lollies, lollipops host, because every day holds a promise of more and every action contains the power of possibility. It's not about what the world says or even what the world shows. The strength of hope and encouragement will and does push through the limits and the walls of the world. My prayer is always that you will find hope. Be blessed and be a blessing. Thanks for joining us this week for Growing Hope with Katherine Lang. Katherine is a leader in encouragement, a networking specialist, and your Hope Smith extraordinaire. To learn more about Growing Hope, visit Katherine's website at www.katherinelang.com. That's www.katherinelang.com. Catherine is also available to speak or teach at your next event. Use the contact form on the website or email Catherine with queries or questions at contactus at CatherineLang.com. If you are looking for more hope and inspiration for your week, you can sign up for the Reflections column that mails out each Sunday at www.CatherineLang.com reflections. 
And be sure to join us back here each week for Growing Hope, where Catherine shares her heart for encouragement and her vision for hope. Until next week, keep watching for that place where your heart is open to pursue the extraordinary.